Good afternoon, friends. Another day working on the 1966 shovel head. Today, we're gonna to take apart the front end. Now, I've got all my parts ready to go to the vapor hone guy who's gonna do my engine cases and quite a few other parts. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do the same thing with these lower legs. I'm not exactly sure if it's a good idea or a bad idea, but today I need to get this thing apart anyway. As you can see, the boots are falling apart, the seals are leaking, Everything needs a good cleaning, so I need to go ahead and get this thing stripped down and ready to be put back together. Even the axle needs a good cleaning, and it's a little rough on the ends. Of course, there's some old grease on there. All that needs to be you know, cleaned off, needs to go in the parts washer and set for a little while. So that'll be something that gets done soon. This top ring is all chewed up, so I'm gonna to need to order a new one of these, just so I have something that's a little bit nicer to grab onto. And obviously, as you can see, the boots are really gross, so those are going right in the trash can. I'm not sure how much oil is in these forks right now because they did leak pretty bad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the bottom two Allen screws here and I'm going to go ahead and let the fork oil drain into a pan. As you can see, there's a little bit of oil in there, so we're going to try to work some of that oil out. It looks like there was a fair bit in there still. Now I know most fork legs have these drain screws on the back side, and these screws are a little chewed up, and I've never had really good luck with removing them, so I typically don't mess with those. Um, these ones will get removed now that I've got the legs off, and if they get ruined in removing them, that's okay because the legs are gonna get stripped anyway. Okay, I would take a little break and do a little maintenance. The screw head that was in the bottom of this tube here, this lower leg, was stripped out. I did not help it by using the impact on that. I was hoping the impact would bite in enough to be able to spin it enough to get it out, but unfortunately I could not do that. So I went to the hardware store and I bought one of these DeWalt uh, pilot point bits and I drilled through the head of this. And I have to say, these things are amazing. This thing drilled like butter. I just used a little bit of free as a lubricant, and then I drilled all the way through the head, and then I used my Lennox steel bits here to actually just spin the head off, and that works really well. So now that I have that off, I can get this stuff out of the way, and I can pull this leg off. I've gone ahead and got a lot of the oil out in this pan here. I should be able to dump the rest of it out here. There we are. And it looks like the cap that's on the bottom here, just like this, for this leg, or for this damper, is stuck in the bottom tube as well. So when I get that cleaned, I'll get that pulled out, and I'll have to go ahead and get on this screw here with a set of channel locks and hold this in place so that way I can screw this out. Unfortunately, sometimes these things get stuck in there, and there's no good way to get them out. I know that in the past I've created tension by pressing the spring together, and I was able to turn you know, these screws out. But with this one being stripped, I didn't have that opportunity this time. So I just went ahead and drilled the head of it off. I know I'm gonna get a rebuild kit anyway. So all these parts are gonna be replaced. And now that I have the ability to you know, get this or have this apart, I'll be able to replace them easier. I believe I've got all of the fluid out. We're gonna pick this thing up over this tray here and try to see if anything else comes out.
a little bit left in there. This is always one of those really messy jobs. You kind of get oil everywhere. So I put these pads down because you do a great job of soaking it all up. Next, I'm gonna get this tray out of the way. I'm gonna grab my wrench and I'm gonna get these caps apart. And that way I can get these legs removed. And then I'll be able to have the trees separated. I'll be able to clean everything up. The, excuse me, I didn't mean to say legs. The tubes here look like they're replacement tubes. They look like they're in pretty good shape. And I'd like to go ahead and use these again, but I do need to get them tore down the rest of the way. So I need to get these legs moved, get this pan moved, and then get my wrench. Okay, now that I've got a few more tools, I just need to go ahead and remove these top nuts here. These are actually just hand tightened in place. I just needed to get everything out of the way when I took this bike apart. I didn't torque these back down, so just setting in place. I'll unscrew those by hand. Now what I'll need to do is go ahead and flip this over. There are a couple of pinch bolts in the back here, so I'll have to find the right size wrench for these. Should be a 9 16 They've got 12-point headed bolts in here. I'm not sure who put those in, but those are not the correct bolts for this. So I'll have to go ahead and get a wrench on these and then get those worked out so I can pull these tubes. Since these are a 12-point, I believe these are a a bolt for a caliper. I could be totally wrong, but they take a 7 16 Typically, these are a 9 16 six-sided bolt, you know, pinch bolt, excuse me, for, for these lower trees. But for some reason, these are in here. I'll go ahead and get these backed out. With the pinch bolt out of the way here, I should be able to remove these legs easily. They should just slide out, and they are, thankfully. And with the legs out of the way here, or the tubes, excuse me, I keep saying legs and I don't mean that, these are fork tubes. With the tubes out of the way, the trees are all set here and they're ready to be cleaned up. I will have to replace these pinch bolts with the proper ones. I'm not exactly sure what those are off of, but I know that they don't go to this. Uh, for now, they're in place. We'll go ahead and keep them there. I wanna go ahead and clean everything up here. I know I need to get new bearings, new neck bearings. Uh, not that these are real bad shape. I just want to replace them since I'm in there anyway. These are probably good enough, but you know, since I've got this thing torn down this far, I might as well go all the way, right? From here with the tubes, there's a little bit of, you know, rust and galling on them. So I'd like to clean these up. The bottom sides are fairly good. There's a little wear here and that may be a leak point. So I might end up replacing these as well. I'm not sure yet. That could be why these are not sealing well. This one's in better shape by a lot. I need to break these down the rest of the way. So with my large Milwaukee wrench, I'm gonna go ahead and start loosening up this tube top here. Now these are under a lot of pressure, so you wanna be careful with that. They will go flying across the shop. What I like to do is I like to get it loosened up enough to grab it with a rag and spin it in my hand. That way it won't jump across the room and you don't risk hurting yourself. I should be wearing glasses while I'm doing this just in case. And typically I try to, and as you can see, under a lot of pressure. So now that that's apart, I can remove my spring. The spring of course is covered in oil. From there, I can pull the bottom of the damper tube and then push my damper all the way out. So there I have my damper. And all these parts need to get washed. So I'm gonna to have to put these in the parts washer, wash everything up, get the oil cleaned off of them, and then have them ready to be reinstalled. With that, we just need to repeat the process on the other tube here, and then the tubes are ready to go. So I'm gonna move this one out of the way. We'll go ahead and loosen this top cap up, just like I did on the other side. Again, I'll put my rag over the top of that just so I have something to hang on to. 
kind of gives it a little bit of extra to fight against it jumping out of my hand. And we'll pull that spring. That oil is very liquidy, so I'm assuming that probably has water in it. I'm gonna grab my tray actually and dump this out into it. A little less came out than I expected. Get this damper pulled. There's the rest of the liquid. We'll go ahead and get the damper in the wash tank. That sit for a little while. Well friends, as you can see, this is the disassembly of a 41 millimeter front end. I believe they put these front ends on 78 to 84, 83, somewhere in there. Wide glide um, FL models, not FLH, or FLT, excuse me, FL and FLH models. It's the single disc front end that came on the wide glides. And they may have run them on other options too, or other years as well, but I think those few years is the only time they ran these. So from here, I have some decisions to make. Do I replace these tubes? I know the one's really worn pretty heavily, and I may replace it. I want to go ahead and measure these, take a look and see what length they are, and if they're a stock length or if they're over, I believe they're stock length, and then see if they're available. They may not be available. I know some of these things are getting harder and harder to find, especially new or replacement, but I'm gonna go ahead and look and see if I can find them. From there, I need to order an entire seal kit, and then of course the legs themselves are gonna go out for soda blast or for uh, vapor honing, excuse me. The top tree and bottom tree set up, I need to go ahead and just clean up. I need to get the right pinch bolts, and I need to get a, a bearing set for that for the neck cup bearings because like I said I want to replace those. Once I have all those pieces then all this is going to go back together so stay tuned for that. Well friends another short video today just kind of wanted to show you the process of taking this thing apart show you some of the hurdles obviously that you can see that you may run into and then of course how to combat those things. You know these old parts you know they've been together for a long time and sometimes they'll fight you and when they fight you that kind of makes it really difficult. Anyway, I appreciate you guys sticking to the end and watching the videos. If you like this one, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. You know, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you haven't followed me on Facebook, Instagram, or eBay, check me out. All my pages are there. My parts are for sale on eBay. Of course, I post about, you know, the different things I'm doing on both Instagram and on Facebook now. So if you haven't found me on there, look me up. As always, friends, take care. We'll catch you next time.